Hello again, welcome to Tombow Land. We over here today, this is part two of our Busa engine build. It's a 0809 motor that we're building and I just so happened I got my good buddy Luther over here who's a, another one of the Busa riders also. Thanks Tom for inviting me. I see you have a lot of parts here today for the engine uh, rebuild on the Busa 08, I think through 010. So uh, can you tell me what's, what you got going here and wh how these parts are related? Well, right now we this this block right here we got from MPS. This is a 13. This right here takes the motor out to a 1441. I got this block right here from MPS Racing. Uh, some of the parts that we're going to be using on this build, and I got a a clutch mod from Brock Davidson. Uh, this is a clutch cushion kit, so we're going to be using that. And we got the web the cams that we got from webcam right there. And those cams right there, Luther, these right here are, are welded up, hard welded cams that Web uh, made up for us for this engine build. They're 378 lift cams. And then also they put this, they put this adjustable cam sprocket on there. Also they put on there what we got from Snitch Racing. These cams right here are going to really make a true Tombow s and bike, you know, street and strip. All right, Tom, I see we got some valves here, too. Can you tell me a little bit about these? Well, these valves right here, these are the, the stock 0809 valves. These are titanium. And what we did, we sent the head to Bruce in California. And Bruce poured it and polished this head right here. And I'll tell you a little bit later uh, how he how he got the flow numbers up on it and how he poured it and polished it and milled the head. So we got to put the head back together, assemble the head with valve springs and seals that we got from Snitch Racing also. Okay, Luther, this is the, the block right here that we're gonna use on this, this Booster Motor build right here. This is the block the MPS bored and rechromed and done for us also. And these are the pistons from CP. And what we're gonna do on these pistons right here, uh, we're going to start getting them ready to go because these pistons right here, you can't put them in there the way they are. Can't put them in there. Yeah, Tom, I see that uh, you said that these are from CP. Mm -hmm. And see, me being a novice, I would think these, these pistons are, are ready to go. But I see here that you have one that's a little bit different. Can you tell me about some of the procedures that you do before the installment? Yeah, well, one of the things that we do, Luther, we come in over here and we take one of these pistons right here and we take a pitch of scotch bright. You know, most people like to use the little, you know, little electric rollers mm -hmm. and Dremels and all that. Well, I, I like to do it the old fashioned way and I take a piece of scotch bright right here and I want to gently go in there and kind of deburr the piston and rough it up a little bit. Then and take all and take all the the shiny spots off of the piston and get it all nice and smooth. Okay, why do you do that? You know, the reason why that I, I do the reason why I do this right here is to get rid of all the, these edges, these sharp edges on the piston, and I take this this Scotch Brite and sand it down, get rid of all the sharp edges, and get all the all the shiny spots out of the pistons because if you put this piston in there just like like this right here, mm -hmm. one of the things that you're going to run across is uh, the heat flashes. The heat flashes is going to come down on inside the combustion chamber, going to come down and it's going to burn. It's going to burn over here, burn over here in this corner right here. As I can show you on this stock piston right here, if you notice, look right here, you see the high low spots and the discoloration that comes because this piston brand new. It didn't have any of those none of that done to it and so what happens is it starts the heat just comes and tries to grab wherever it can and these shiny spots is where the heat's going to concentrate at and you know in the fire right there so it's going to be a hot flash on your piston so we want to cool it down and make the motor run more efficient and cooler by taking in and taking this whole shiny coating off of it. And then what we're gonna do next is, once we get it all completed, we're gonna tape up the sides right here, tape all the sides up where the rings, the ring grooves are, are taped up, and we're gonna take right. it back to the back of the shop, and we're gonna bead blast it with some aluminum oxide sand, and it's gonna give it that dull gray look on the top right here. So now when we put this, motor, this piston in the motor, when we assemble it, it'll be ready to go race. So that makes it an easier to tune process? Makes, makes it easier to tune everything, you know, so it's, it's a process that, that, that I've been 
utilizing for over 20 years. So now we now we're ready to start installing the rings, get the rings ready. You know, most guys will take these rings and and think they can put them in right now. That's why the guy at home has got to uh, watch this stuff. One of the things we're going to do now is fit the ring to each one of the cylinders. So we'll take the piston, one of these pistons, and we'll push it down the length of the halfway. That's what I like to do right there. Come right here and go halfway right there. Then I pull the piston, I loop it, then I measure the end gap of the ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now, this end gap of this ring right now is, uh, say, 8,000. So as soon as you put this motor together with these, this ring gap and it gets hot, the first thing it's going to do, the ring's going to close up. And when they close up, they ain't going to have no room to expand. So what we're going to do is take this ring out, pull it out gently. Then we're going to come over here to this ring follower and we're going to follow a little bit out. on both sides, deburred a little bit. And we have, uh, here at Tombos, we got different specs for our turbo motors, uh, street motors, and our nitrous motors where we like to set our ring clearance at. So, and we set it up for each application, for each type of motor. Uh, this motor right here is gonna be uh, one of our Tombo s and S motors, street and strip. So we're going to have this one set up where we can utilize nitrous in the horsepower. So we have it set up perfectly. Okay, Luke, now we're back. This is the camshaft that we're replacing on this thing now. This is the booster cam. This is like approximately, this is a, a exhaust cam right here. This cam right here is approximately a 290 lift. And now, is this a stock? This is a stock cam. All right. right. And uh, one of the things that we... Uh, we're doing is replacing it with these webcams right here. Now, why would somebody go from a stock to an aftermarket? Well, this cam right here is bigger and it's got more duration. And the, one of the things that we done, the webcam is done to it, is put a, a welded the cam up, hard chromed it, and grind it, you know, to get our, our, our lift that we want for this Tombow motor that we're doing. We, we got uh, some spec, some specs that we like over here at Tombow for our cams. So we had these cams done by Web. Anybody can buy them, but it's just the way that you can tune them and all that stuff that you can make them work. And then we uh, got adjustable sprockets put on them at Web that we got from Snitch Racing on it also. You know, this is the way that the sprocket right here comes that we get from Snitch where you can make the cam where it's more tunable and adjustable. And what they do is press them off and press the new one on here. And um, that's some of the stuff that they do to them over at Web. So is this uh, cam a little bit more uh, widely used for this application and adjustability? And these are some of the things that you want. Do you talk to, to webcam before you, you buy something? You ask them to some of the uh, qualifications that you might be looking for in your engine rebuild? Yeah, well, webcam, I've been, believe it or not, I've been using webcam for over 30 years. And so uh, Steve, Lori, Debbie over at webcam, they're good friends of mine. And some of the stuff that they do to the cam, like like I said earlier, they take and hard weld this cam up right here. Like on the stock cam, they weld this up so it's got more lift. It's got more lift, and then they weld it from the back all the way around. And once they get it all welded, then they take it and grind the cam to get the the specs that we want to open it up, to make the valves open sooner, close, and all of that. Uh, then they take this cam right here. Uh, then they straighten this cam. Then they take they take and straighten the cam and then check it for specs to make sure it's ground what they wanted at or what I wanted at. And, and then they take in this coating that they put on as a parkerized coating. And what this coating does right here is protect this cam right here from uh, getting all beat up and mm -hmm. beat up and all that stuff. Excuse me, I'm getting to get this other cam. This is a cam, this is a cam right here that, that's that been used and, and as you can see how the lobes are burnt up and everything. And this is not a hard welded cam. This cam right here is a billet cam. And so they put that parkerized on the cam to keep them from burning. 
and getting all galled up and so on and so on. As you can see, this camera has been through the ringer, being abused. Right. I can see where this is a lot cleaner looking cam, but it looks a lot tougher and the process looks like it's more workmanship involved than a stock cam. Yeah. Yeah, Luke, this is a new cylinder head that we got from Bruce in California. Bruce been doing cylinder heads for me for a while. This guy's real good. Uh, he poured it and polished his head and surfaced his head right here. This head right here is uh, going to pick us up a lot. I see some different kind of work here. Can you explain uh, some of the details that he had done on this to make this head up to your specification. Did you call him and tell him what you needed and what you expected from this head? Well, Bruce has been doing heads since the 60s, so I didn't have to call and explain to him hardly nothing. This is a high booster head, and it is, these heads are real tricky. You can't do a lot of port work with them. You can't do a lot of a lot of things to them because you, you're uh, you'll mess up the flow on them. Bruce got this head right here it's flowing from 130 CFMs at uh, 400 lift to 144 at 400 lift. And some of the things that he had done to it is what you call de the valve area mm -hmm. right here. So he took all the sharp edges out of the valve area here. He took all that, the sharp edges ar around the valve area here the seats and so the reason that he did that because you know here's here again the heat would get to that and stick to that so we we only got rid of that so by him doing that we come back and we took another we, we had we surfaced the head to make up what we took out of the combustion chamber so we don't lose any compression in this bad boy so when we put it back together it's going to be right then he did a then he did a valve job on it put a competition valve job on it and he raised the seats and did the port work on it so this thing right here will be ready to go then he took these uh, stock the stock titanium valves each one of them been been lapped in and make sure that it's true to the seat so when I put this thing back together it'll be it'll be a perfect seal it'd be better than factory so I've been hearing some of these these terminologies now since I've been hanging out with you about the last couple of years. Flow benching. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the processes that they go through for that to get to the results that you want? Well, on the when he puts his head on the flow bench, he takes it and he he flowed it before and after, and that's how we get we come up with these numbers here. That's how we come up with these numbers here. We he flowed it before and float it out there. You know, you, I showed you what a, a flow bench look like, and it's real critical with these booster motors that you use a flow bench because these heads have got so much material in it. If you take material out of the wrong spot, you didn't ruin the head. You all slow right. all of the flow down. Hey, this wraps up part two of our booster motor build. And we want to thank some of the people that's been helping us with this motor build, such as CP Piston, MPS, uh, Brock Davidson Performance, Snitch Racing, and Bruce from California that did our head. Thanks.